ne trouve pas ça bizarre que les parents et les enfants ne veulent jamais parler de ça Parler de quoi Bah de... Bah de... I was watching a lot of Cassavetti's movies and had kind of been hearing things about this French equivalent. That sort of led me to start looking at PLA movies. But it was really, I know Zell Moore, that's one of those first viewing experiences that still sticks with me. It seems somehow both completely spontaneous and completely deliberate. That to me is sort of a magic trick, how you can make cinema feel real and stumbled upon. It just was one of those formative movies, not just the movie itself, which is just this kind of singular, um, incredible piece of work, but, but again, also the, the learning about the, the process through which it was made and the idea of injecting what you'd have to call documentary into the constructs of a totally fictional film. Around the time that I first watched Inoza Moore and then kind of really got into Piala it would have been around the time I was making my first film, Guy Madeline, and I was, I think, extra fascinated at the time about how you can use the camera to try to get at something that maybe wouldn't be evident on the page. Trying to sort of create a structure where you could use accidents, where you'd be a scene would be going, but if the phone rang accidentally because the actor, you know, forgot to turn it off, then they should answer the phone and just see, you know, and kind of stay, you know, and we'll see who's calling and see what the conversation leads to, and then maybe that'll lead to, let's see how the other actor feels about that, and, the, and just trying to kind of, I mean, I guess it's sort of basic ideas of, of improvisation, but instead of improvising within a completely hermetic, sealed world, you try to actually, you try to let the world in. If nothing else, I think Piala is a great example of what amazing stuff can happen when you shake things up, when you really try to actively upset the balance. La prochaine fois que tu me fais un coup comme ça, Suzanne, hein, je t'étrangle. Mais ça va pas, non J'en ai marre que tu t'écoutes ma gueule tout le temps comme ça. Tous les soirs, tu me fais chier à la fin. You just feel like you're stumbling upon something absolutely real. Tu sais, hein, c'est pas tellement agréable de vivre sans aimer personne. C'est pas que j'aime personne, d'ailleurs. Tu vois, mon père, hein, je l'adore. Enfin, ça me fait une belle chance. Sandrine Bonner's performance in that movie, you really feel like you're watching someone completely grow up and change, and, and not just emotionally, but even physically. Her face just seems to take on all these different dimensions during those two hours. Je la cuisine et personne mange. Jamais d'appétit, c'est pour la ligne. Tu t'es baquillé encore. I love the idea of tension in movie making. J'ai rien dit. Trying to do something while trying to do the opposite thing and trying to kind of see if those two can, can meet. You feel director versus actor. You feel, in Piala's case, almost director versus actor within himself. Tu attends qu'on t'aime, tu crois aimer, et puis en fait, tu attends seulement qu'on t'aime. Ben, c'est tout le monde comme ça. Oh, sûrement pas. Ben, si. Oh non, il y a des gens qui sont capables d'aimer. Oh, pas beaucoup, en tout cas. Ah oui Mais t'es pas dans le bon loup pour l'instant. Improvisation versus the sort of composition of the camera, uh, fiction versus documentary, you feel all those things just kind of fighting it out, duking it out. Tiens, j'ai le père. And there were things that Piala did in that film that I'm not able to do or wouldn't consider doing. A lot of it comes from him casting himself in the film and playing with that dual role of actor, director. Et trouve mignon, Martine. Ouais. Trouve que t'as des beaux yeux. <laughs> tu veux que je vienne dans le lit? <laughs> I just keep thinking about the climax of the movie, the dinner scene, where after a long absence and you sort of think his character has gone off and kind of abandoned the family. Uh, which has sort of caused a lot of the family to unravel, and you sort of think that that's it for his character. And then he shows up, and it's this kind of come-to-Jesus scene that's just really uncomfortable and memorable. Bonjour. Ah, excusez-moi, je sais pas. Il y avait tout ce beau monde. The rest of the cast, and even some of the crew, had a completely different idea of what that scene was going to be, and Piala kept from them this idea that he was going to walk back on in character. Knowing that and then looking at the looks on their faces and the shock and the, there's just stuff that's not acted there that's just incredible. Tu vas me laisser manger en paix, non? Mais bah, je te connais par cœur, tu vas dans deux secondes, tu vas faire. Bah, 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 bah. Bah, tu feras pas. Bah, 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 bah. 
that idea that you could just totally mess with the form, that you could turn a fiction movie into a documentary, that you could use actors and yet catch non-acted moments, that I think was just um, kind of mind-opening for me. Les gens qu'on aime beaucoup, on voudrait toujours qu'ils soient morts. Pas une fille, je pense pas qu'elle pense à de son père. Enfin. Moi, je crois que tout cela, ils auraient voulu que je crève. Alors là, je serais devenu un dieu vivant. J'ai compris. Si j'étais mort. Ouh, arrêté, merde. And especially, even if you want to do a cinema of cruelty or a cinema of violence, there's nothing that's going to be as violent as as what happens when a love like that turns on its head. It's because you've built up this series of relationships between these people and because a lot of them are family members and because um, there's this sort of, sort of core dynamic at the table of father and wife and, and daughter and son and then the, the sort of satellites around that. It's because Piala is starting from that that it feels so scary and violent in terms of how it unfolds. <laughs> It feels somehow like there was both not a script, but also that there's not improvisation. You know, it just feels like there was no discussion of where to put the camera, and yet the camera position and movement always feels incredibly precise and deliberate. There's some filmmakers, a lot of equally great filmmakers, where you can kind of do the detective work a little bit of trying to piece together, okay, this is how they thought of this, and this is how they rehearsed this and changed this. You can kind of unspool it a little bit like that, but Piala, Always to me, always watching the movies, they, they feel like they weren't made. They feel like they just kind of landed with a thud from, uh, from the sky or, or you know, a hole in the ceiling maybe is a better way of putting it. They feel unshaped and raw and pure, I guess, for that reason. I don't know. And it's all, it can sound kind of bullshitty to talk about them in that way because obviously they were sort of written to a certain degree and acted and edited. But maybe it's because the behavior on display is so different from what you see in ordinary films and, and, and he was so interested in excavating and pushing the behavior to those places. Whatever it was, it makes those movies feel like they just materialized rather than got made. Moi je t'offre tes 15 ans. J'ai plus 15 ans.